Hey, John here from Grape and Granary, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make an Orchard Breezen uh, RJ Spagnuolo's wine kit. Um, the Orchard Breezen line is a line of light, fruity wines. They usually come in around six to eight percent alcohol. It's a great summery, refreshing kind of picnic wine. The one we're going to be working with today is the Pomegranate Wild Berries Infandel, and this kit, like most of these, make makes six U.S. gallons or about 29 to 30 bottles. So let's talk a little bit first of all about what comes with the kit. What you're going to get is a bag of concentrated juice. You're going to get uh, various clarifiers, a pack of yeast, a sorbate or stabilizer, and sulfite. And then finally you're going to get a pack of sweetener, which is your pomegranate juice. And that goes in right before we're going to bottle. Okay, um, this does make a six gallon batch again, so we want to make sure we have the equipment sized properly for a six gallon batch of wine. Ideally, it'd be nice to have an eight gallon uh, plastic or glass primary fermenting vessel. Plastic, I think, is easier to work with. This is eight gallons. And then for the clarifi clarification step, you're going to want to have a six gallon sized uh, carboy, either plastic or glass. So that's the basics of the equipment. Also, really nice to have also would be a wine hydrometer. So why don't we just go ahead and jump right in. I'll show you the various steps following the instructions and let's get to it. So the first step then is to make sure we sanitize the equipment that we're going to start out with. So I've gone ahead and sanitized our primary fermenter, our airlock, our lid, and our spoon. And I did that with uh, some Easy Clean and you can use uh, the sanitizer of your choice. A lot of people will use the Easy Clean, which is easy to use. Um, an iodine based sanitizer is another, is another one of my favorites. So as long as you sanitize everything, then you're ready to go. Step number one is going to be to add one gallon of water to our sanitized primary fermenter. A uh, really handy thing to have is to have your primary fermenter graduated so you know where one gallon is, two gallons, three gallons, all the way up to six gallons. And in this case, this bucket is six gallons right to this lip right here. So we're going to start out by putting one gallon of water into our fermenter. So we've got our one gallon of water in our primary fermenter. I'm going to go ahead and open up the bentonite, which is a silica clay. And we're just going to gently stir this across, or sprinkle this across the top of the water. And the idea here is not to let it clump up. And we'll take our handy dandy sanitized spoon and we'll just stir that up again, avoiding any clumps. Then once the bentonite's in, we're going to go ahead and add our pack of juice. So we'll pop the top off here. We're going to pour this into the fermenter. And a really good idea is to maybe use a little bit of warm water after you've got all of the juice out into your fermenter to rinse out the bag. That way you can get every little bit of juice into our fermenter. So you can see I put a little bit of water in here. We'll use that to rinse out more of the juice. And now we're just going to top up to the six gallon mark with more water. Um, the water you use is fairly important. You want good tasting water. Unlike beer brewing, you don't have to worry about the water containing chlorine. So if you have good tasting tap water, just go ahead and use it. You don't need to dechlorinate it or anything like that. If your water doesn't taste good, I'd recommend buying bottled water. And we're gonna bring this right up to the 23 liter or six gallon mark again, which is right here at the lip on our pail. And then we want to go ahead and stir really well, make sure we get everything evenly dispersed. And then we're going to go ahead and take a sample out with a turkey baster, and we're going to put a sample into our test jar, which should come with your hydrometer. Sometimes it's just a storage jar. And we'll fill this up about three quarters of the way. We want to go ahead and get a reading. According to our instructions, we want to be somewhere between 50 and 60 on the specific gravity scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill this test tube up, make sure the hydrometer is floating, and then once it's floating, we want to see where the liquid level cuts across the scale. So generally, I give it a quick little spin there to dislodge any bubbles, and I can see right now we're reading somewhere around 54, 55. So we're right in the range where we want to be. If for some reason you wanted to make this wine a little more alcoholic than it normally would be. At this point in time, you could put an extra pound of sugar in and that would give you about one extra uh, percent of alcohol. 
And now we're going to go ahead and add our pack of yeast. Uh, this is the EC1118 from Lalvin. We just rip the packet open. And we're going to sprinkle that right across the surface. No need to stir it in. And then we're going to go ahead and place our lid on top of our fermenter. Snap it down tight. And make sure our airlock is filled about halfway with water. Probably fill this up just a little bit more. And we'll place this fermenter with the sealed lid and airlock in a room that's right around 70 degrees. So two days after adding the yeast, you can see our airlock is vigorously releasing the gas from the fermentation and we have a good fermentation underway. Okay, uh, we're back. We're here on day 14 now with our pomegranate wild berries Infandel, and we're ready to go ahead and do our next step. And this is going to be the stabilizing and clarifying uh, step. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to remove about a half a gallon of the wine from our fermenting vessel and we're going to uh, siphon some of that half a gallon of wine into a holding container. This will allow us to transfer the bulk of our batch into a secondary fermenter, which in this case is going to be a six gallon glass carboy. It doesn't really matter whether you use glass or plastic, but in this case I just happen to have a glass carboy available. So we're going to rack one and a half gallon into here as a holding container. We're going to transfer the rest of the wine from our primary fermenter to our secondary fermenter, leaving behind the sediment. Then we'll do our stabilizing step and clarifying, and then we'll use what we have left in here to top back up and bring our volume up to six gallons. So the first thing we want to do though to make sure we're ready to go on to the next step is check our hydrometer. We want to make sure that the reading on the hydrometer according to the instructions is down around 0.996 or 0.998. And um, we'll go ahead and get a quick tight shot of this hydrometer. You'll see where our reading is on our hydrometer and then we'll go ahead and do the next step. So our reading is probably 0.994, maybe 0.996. I remember originally when this thing started out, we were way up here around 60 or so. So as the yeast has converted the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide, the liquid becomes less dense and it's much more thin, so the hydrometer sinks. And now we're way down there around 990, 992, 994. And we, that's exactly where we need to be to go ahead and feel comfortable doing our next step. So we're going to use our auto siphon to siphon about a half a gallon of wine out of our fermenter. And again, this will just be our small amount to hold in reserve. So I just give my quick pump to our auto siphon. We'll go ahead and let that siphon over into our half gallon jug. We'll stop that flow. And then we're going to go ahead and transfer the rest off into our six gallon carboy, leaving the bulk of the sediment behind. I like to kind of keep the uh, racking tube three or four inches below the liquid level. And then as the liquid level in the fermenter drops, I just slowly keep lowering the racking tube. And when we get down to the very bottom, we'll stop siphoning, leaving that sediment behind. I'll give you a quick peek here so you can see how it's looking as we're siphoning it over. You can kind of see the sediment there at the top of the pail. And since I've created a pool there at the bottom, the sediment is sticking to the bucket, the bottom of the bucket, and all the liquid is just slowly draining out of the corner. Okay, then as per the instructions, we're going to go ahead and take package number A, or letter A, and we're going to add that to our carboy. And then we're going to go ahead and stir that for about a minute. And I'm just going to use the handle end of my spoon here. And I think you can see now why we needed to remove about a half a gallon of the wine so that we have enough room to do this without making a big mess. Then we're going to go ahead and add packet B. In this particular case, we actually have two packet Bs. If you wanted to, you could even dissolve these in a little bit of warm water first. Makes it a little bit easier to get it dissolved into the wine, but it's not necessary as long as you have a good spoon and you're stirring vigorously. So we'll add the two pack Bs and stir that well. Now once we've got packets A and packet B in there, we're just going to go ahead and stir it for five minutes. This is called a degassing stage and it's really important that you stir it well like this for about five minutes. This will really make sure we drive some of the gas out of the wine and that will allow our clarifying agents to get in there and really help pull everything down to the bottom and get the wine nice and clear. So we just stir it like this for about five minutes using the handle of the spoon. Once our vigorous stirring is done, we're going to go ahead and add packet D1 to the mix.
and we're going to stir that in. And then we're going to add our sweetening blend, which is our uh, pomegranate wild berry juice. And then our clarifying agent. And we'll go ahead and stir this up again. Make sure everything gets evenly dissolved and dispersed. And once everything's stirred up nicely, we're going to go ahead and use the wine that we pulled aside earlier to top up. Now you can use the wine that we used for our hydrometer test, provided that we sanitized the uh, cylinder. And then we also have the half of a gallon of wine that we pulled out earlier. We can use that as well. So what we want to do is we want to bring our full volume right up to about an inch or so below the stopper that's going to be on our carboy. Any of the extra wine that's left over, we can save this and we can add this at bottling time. So there you have the stabilizing and clearing step. We transferred a half a gallon of wine out of the fermenter into a holding container, put the rest of the wine in our carboy, we added the sulfite, the sorbate, the sweetening pack, and then we stirred really well, added our clarifying agents, and now the wine's going to sit in here for another two weeks. Uh, once everything falls clear, we'll be ready to go ahead and do the next step, which is bottling. Here we are on day 28. We're ready to go ahead and bottle our wine. You can see just how clear it is, uh, but what I want you to see is how much sediment there is on the bottom. We're going to get a, a close-up of this. I think you can see we have a nice, tight band of sediment on the bottom of the carboy there, and we don't want to disturb that yeast sediment. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our auto siphon to siphon the wine out of the secondary container, out of the carboy, into a separate container that we're going to bottle out of. That way we don't disturb the sediment. Now if you have a spigot on that container you're going to bottle from, that makes it even easier, but it's not necessary. So the first thing we're going to do is siphon the wine from the carboy into our pail. We're going to add the extra topping wine that we collected earlier on to the pail. We're going to stir all that up and then we're going to go ahead and transfer the wine into bottles. Okay, then we're ready to go ahead and fill our bottles. There's basically two ways you can do that. One, you can just go ahead and fill the bottles directly from the spigot, like this. Or you can go ahead and attach a spring-loaded bottle filler like this to your spigot. And this makes it quite a bit easier. Open our spigot up and this uh, spring-loaded bottle filler has a valve at the bottom and when we press down, it'll allow the liquid to flow and then when we let go of the pressure, the valve will shut. So that way we can go from bottle to bottle without making a mess. Once your bottles are filled, you're ready to go ahead and cork them. Um, I prefer to use the microparticle cork. I think they work really well with a lot of the corkers and, uh, that you find these days. You want to make sure once you cork the bottles, you want to lay the bottles, uh, stand the bottles upright for about 24 hours. That allows the cork to swell back up and create a seal. Then you can lay your bottles down if you like. Um, and that's pretty much it from making a wine from an Orchard Breeze and Wine Kit. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at Grape and Granary. My name's John, and you can find us on the web at www.thegrape.net. And thanks for watching.